Hello, welcome to Business Morning. It's the first trading week and the last trading week of March. Well, let's get a sense of um, what to expect now. Starting with the oil market, we see oil prices um, rose in early Asian trade today um, on concerns over a tighter global supply brought about by escalating conflicts in the Middle East and between Russia and Ukraine, while a shrinking U.S. rig um, counts. That added to upward price um, pressure. We've seen a lot of volatility in the oil market. Now we see Brent there um, holding on to $85.67 a barrel, up 0.30%. Then we see the U.S. Um, grade there. Not solidly above that $80 um, level. It did climb above that uh, sometime last week, but it's now just at $80.88, 0.30%, the same um, growth margin we're seeing there. So we're still expecting more um, volatility in the oil market um, this week, even though we had the uh, rate decision from the U.S. Fed, and we know how rates actually impact um, oil markets. But let's uh, take a look at grain market. Now, see Chicago wheat future rose to a three-week high, um, today, amid concerns over the French crop and tension in the Black Sea, although ample supply, that kept prices near uh, multi-year lows. Even though we see wheat starts um, up 0.4%, $5.56 for three quarters of a bushel. Let's look at soybean now and uh, corn. Uh, we see soybean, that's um, down, uh, down about 0.2%, uh, $11.90 um, a bushel, uh, holding up... Uh, Still down, you know, at this point, even though we saw some price um, increase uh, last week, that's for um, soybean. Let's look at corn now. Corn CV1, that's also down 0.2%, $4.38 for um, half a bushel. So we're seeing uh, mixed sentiment there in the grains uh, market um, at this time. All right, let's look at what's happening with um, Binance. Yeah, Binance still in the news at this time in a decisive move aimed at upholding fiscal responsibility and safeguarding the economic integrity of the country, the federal government has uh, initiated criminal proceedings against Binance, a prominent cryptocurrency exchange platform. And the charges filed at the federal high court, uh, that was announced today by the Federal Inland um, Revenue Service, FIRS. Um, the lawsuit implicates Binance with a four-count tax evasion accusation, joined with a crypto company as second and third defendants in the suit are Tigran uh, Gambarian and Nadim Andrewala, both senior executives of Binance, currently under custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Even though we heard uh, one with our reports that one of the executives actually um, fled uh, at this point. Well, the charges uh, leveled against uh, Binance include non-payment of value-added tax, company income tax, failure to file tax returns, and complicity in aiding customers to evade taxes through its platform. We'll definitely be waiting for comments from um, Binance uh, on this. To other matters now, the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, RAFAC, has begun work on a new revenue formula. Um, the chairman of RAFAC, Mohamed Sheh, who made this known in Abuja, explained that the remuneration of political and public office holders would be reviewed in batches. The current revenue formula is shared in accordance with the vertical formula as determined by RAFAC and approved um, by the National Assembly. The formula allocates 52% percent about and 26% and 20% to the federal, state, and local governments. There are two types of revenue allocation in um, Nigeria. We have the vertical allocation, which is sharing of revenue among the three tiers of government, and horizontal allocation, which is allocation of revenue between state governments and among local governments within the states. Well, CIBN is the conscience of the financial sector. There's a message with the president of the institute, Mr. Ken Opara, expects to resonate in the daily operations of newly inducted and active bankers in Nigeria. He made a comment through the 2024 Graduate Induction and Prize Awards Day held in Lagos as organized by CIBN. Take a listen. Professionalism are more likely to be considered for promotion and leadership role thereby enhancing the sustainability of their career over time. Short of saying that there is no shortcut to having to build a sustainable career. On that day, ethics and professionalism stand as pillars within the financial services industry and the entire ecosystem, serving as a bedrock upon which trust reliability, credibility, and payment. In recent years, the financial services industry has first 
numerous challenges and controversies that have come that caused a critical need for a renewed focus on ethics and professionalism. Instances of political behavior, neglected by nation and breaches of law, have continued to be major issues that we continue to contend with. High profile cases of misconduct and infraction have not only resulted in financial loss, but also have injured the nature of the institution for all right, let's head on to the first conversation now. We see data from the debt management office shows a significant jump in Nigeria's public debt. We saw by 10.7% to 97.34 trillion as in the fourth quarter of 2023. And we see that uh, big jump there. It was uh, the, the third quarter that uh, gave 87.91 trillion. That was what the total debt stock um, was at before um, the fourth quarter. So we see a big change at 10.7%. Um, jump domestic debts that got about 59.12 uh, trillion, and we see foreign debt 38.22 um, trillion um, naira. Let's um, talk to uh, Dr. Tope Fash now, special advisor on economic affairs. Uh, Join us via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, and good morning, Ladi. Good morning. So, uh, quite a big jump from the third quarter 2023 into the fourth quarter. Has the government seen this um, rise in? Uh, total debt stock at this time. We see in the 2024 budget, debt servicing is supposed to go up about 8.5 um, trillion naira. How's the government looking at debt at this time? Well, uh, very cautiously, I must say. Um, and of course, two things, cautiously and, uh, and, and also very importantly, domestically. So the, the plan is not to, uh, to tank on, on debt, foreign debt especially, given the issues we're having with, um, you know, for example, with the Naira, which, which kind of escalates your debt servicing and all of that. Uh, you see that uh, the, the new debts that we're talking about here are basically um, a domestic debt. And, and of course, these have been planned as part of the, um, the budget to, to, to be able to finance the deficit. So it's the same thing. And of course, I think, again, what's important is that the, 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 the government is going through the due process and also approaching the domestic market. Uh, of recent, you see a few um, issuances of debt, uh, you know, to, 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 first of all, to mop up liquidity and all of those kind of things, and also to finance the, 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 the budget uh, as a whole. So I think uh, we're, we're being cautious as well. Um, it probably is not going to be as before. And what's the plan, you know, to keep um, debt level at, at a sustainable uh, level at this point? Because it seems, you know, one government um, uh, takes office, tax debt up uh, for the country, and leaves it, you know, for the next um, government. How, how does this government plan, you know, to keep okay. our debt level yeah, thank you sustainable? Very much. Yes. Very importantly, um, I think our debt is still very much sustainable. Um, the total debt to GDP is about 41, 42% at most. Uh, yes, people don't like to hear debt to GDP. We look at uh, debt to revenue or debt service to revenue ratio. Uh, what you will see this year and going forward is um, the fact that we're going to be getting a whole lot more revenue than before. The real issue with our debt is actually our revenue. The, um, the point at which we, we would have a red flag is a point at which we say, look, the revenues aren't growing. But if you go and check what the Ministry of Finance is doing, uh, several things, you know, for example, we have um, the NNPC's accounts being uh, reported, uh, the sales in, from NNPC being reported to the CBN uh, as they happen. Uh, you know, that's the directive from the president. The uh, Ministry of Finance, that's the coordinating minister of the economy, has also, uh, on December 28th last year, issued um, a new circular to every MDA, as well as government-owned enterprises, uh, that going forward, you know, we would be using the system uh, technology to sweep uh, the government revenues uh, as against what we had before, which was somehow a bit discretionary, even uh, talking about the TSA, a treasury single account. Now it's technology that's sweeping all the money, so there's no escape. Uh, and of course, new orders were given uh, to, to, to GOEs that were fully funded, those that were partially funded, and those that uh, had no funding at all. Uh, so what you are going to be seeing, uh, well, even also this year, 
the uh, inland revenue uh, is planning 19 trillion in terms of uh, revenue collection up from 10 trillion last year and uh, that they are going to do a lot more than that, you know. So I don't know if I'm still with you, but uh, so I think I think I think so. What we're going to see is uh, a ballooning of our naira revenues. Our, our our petroleum sector is doing a lot better than before. So once you can deal with the revenue side of things, the debt becomes less of a problem. So when this is not a government that will be racking up debt and leaving it for the next government, we're going to take our debt to an even more sustainable level, grow GDP levels, and be able to leave a, a better legacy for the coming government. Right. And looking at the data now, we see domestic debt. That's about 59.12 um, trillion, more than you know, our foreign debt um, exposure at this time. And, and some experts say, um, you know, it's a good thing you know, if the debt is domestic, but there's also that fear that you're going to crowd out you know, the private sector at this time. How are you seeing it? Well, um, you can well you can't have it all, can you? Um, so the thing about the thing about foreign debt is, look, uh, we've seen exchange risk and the fact that uh, you know if you if we borrowed that for when when naira was four hundred and something to the dollar, and now we're talking of about one thousand three hundred to the dollar. Hopefully, uh, the naira will get stronger. Uh, but you can see that you're going to have to do thrice the amount of work getting the naira to convert to the dollar to pay those debts. I would actually favor domestic debt any day. And, and I think what's also very important is this. If we look at um, the countries that we try to emulate in Europe, in America, and what have you, you know, those countries have their debts grounded domestically. Um, most of their debts are war debts, you know, war bonds that were issued a long time ago, you know, sometimes 100, 200 years ago. Uh, so there's, there's the fact that your own people must build your country. Uh, rather than always running abroad to go and get very expensive uh, foreign debt. You know, it's important for us. And I think that's a philosophy that we would also still have to pursue. We haven't done that that's even well enough. The fact that, uh, you know, we have to appeal to our own people to, borrow, to lend money to the government of, the, of, of uh, to, to their own government for the development of their country. So, um, but uh, yes, I think also in terms of crowding out, what we're looking at is, a bigger pie to share, a bigger GDP, meaning that the banks are doing incredibly well as well. The banks are doing incredibly well, and I don't think uh, the government has started to crowd out anyone. Uh, the, the banks have posted good profits over time. Uh, they have capacity. The fintechs have come in to lend uh, to even uh, smaller borrowers. So I think we're still on course in this regard. Right, and we're, we're hoping in 2024 the banks will actually take a chance on some of these small businesses, even though we know the banks normally see them you know, as high risk, you know, at this time to lend money. But it's um, the, the MPC, they start their meeting today. Tomorrow we get a decision. You know, it seems the CBN is winning the fight to, you know, stabilize the FX market, but inflation is still stubbornly high. What do you think is the best way, you know, to handle this kind of inflation? Because we've been having rate hikes for the longest time. Right. Um, you know, the central bank is uh, pursuing uh, a positive interest rate uh, real interest rates uh, regime. Uh, remember that uh, inflation is at 31.7 as we speak. Uh, that's headline inflation. And uh, interest rates are still at 22.7 indicated, uh, indicative interest rates. That's the uh, policy rate, 22.75. So the Central Bank is hoping to uh, catch up very quickly. It's going to be a bit painful uh, because um, we need to start depressing inflation Im immediately. I, I, I would actually, um, I have actually advocated and I've also written on this that what, what we need to understand is that the monetary policy um, instrument alone will not be sufficient. And we should uh, understand that our economy is still growing. We're not at the level of some of the uh, biggest economies in the world where the past three effect and the, um, you know, the, the, the past three effect of monetary policy instrument on the own economy is very fast, very efficient. Here it is not. So what I've advocated is that um, in order for us to, 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 to drive down inflation quicker, uh, everybody has to have their hands on deck. Uh, there's a lot of uh, price gouging going on in Nigeria. 
uh, people who are selling, setting prices arbitrarily, ripping off the people, you know, posting huge profits. So everybody also has to go after that and, and ensure that nobody is cheating them that much. It's, it's, uh, that we need to do that at this moment. So every instance that we see that price increases have, have been uh, extortion, extract, and, you know, kind of extortionary and all of that, we have to go after that. If we look at some of the other structural issues beyond monetary policy, um, we'll be able to drive inflation down faster. Therefore, maybe by the time the central bank, which is likely to, the MPC is likely to increase interest rates, uh, you know, of course that has effects on the, on the manufacturing, real sector and all of that, you know, so, but it, it, let's hope that we, they don't have to increase too high. We don't have to get to the point where countries like Turkey and Co went, went got to before, before reaching the peak. So we're hoping that um, we, can, we, we can reach peak inflation in the next one or two months and at some point, the central bank will also be able to start dropping the, the interest rates in the country. But of course, that is a, a, a clear and present danger for the, uh, for the manufacturing sector, the real sector that needs to borrow money from banks. Uh, the banks aren't looking at small um, borrowers, actually, but uh, there's this, the fintechs to the rescue. Uh, those ones can deal with people who want to borrow 100,000, 1 million. I think it's just the kind of division of labor. Right, and, and definitely, uh, would, they, would they hold policy, would it be that bad, you know, at this time, knowing that we just did about 400 basis points, that's the biggest, you know, hype we've seen in a long time. Um, well, it may not be bad, but, but I think that this is the time for action. I would actually hope that uh, the MPC is, uh, if they're going to increase, maybe not more than 100 basis points, 1%, uh, you know, they need to caution, they need to be cautionary, increases as well but of course they see the dashboard better than i do and they, every every member has a reason for whatever it is they're proposing but uh, i think that they're still going to squeeze a little bit more but i think that the real trick is in understanding that monetary policy alone cannot drive down inflation as fast as we need to i mean we have no business having food inflation of 32 that's 7.92 percent in, in nigeria we have no business doing that so you see we now have to say okay who's driving this Let's, this is the time to understand the structure of uh, markets that's driving down a lot, driving up all of this inflation. So who are those guys playing in that market? Who are the middlemen? What's, what's the system of pricing all of that? Uh, you see that uh, the, the new debts that we're talking about here are basically um, a domestic debt. And, and of course, these have been planned as part of the, um, the budget to, to, to be able to finance the deficit. So it's the same thing. And of course, I think, again, what's important is that the, 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 the government is going through the due process and also approaching the domestic market. Uh, of recent, you see a few um, issuances of debt, uh, you know, to, 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 first of all, to mop up liquidity and all of those kind of things, and also to finance the, 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 the budget uh, as a whole. So I think uh, we're, we're being cautious as well. Um, it probably is not going to be as before. And what's the plan, you know, to keep um, debt level at, at a sustainable uh, level at this point? Because it seems, you know, one government um, uh, takes office, tax debt up uh, for the country, and leaves it, you know, for the next um, government. How, how does this government plan, you know, to keep okay. our debt level yeah, thank you sustainable? Very much. Yes. Very importantly, um, I think our debt is still very much sustainable. Um, the total debt to GDP is about 41, 42% at most. Uh, yes, people don't like to hear debt to GDP. We look at uh, debt to revenue or debt service to revenue ratio. Uh, what you will see this year and going forward is um, the fact that we're going to be getting a whole lot more revenue than before. The real issue with our debt is actually our revenue. The, um, the point at which we, we would have a red flag is a point at which we say, look, the revenues aren't growing. But if you go and check what the Ministry of Finance is doing, uh, several things, you know, for example, we have um, the NNPC's accounts being uh, reported, uh, the sales in, from NNPC being reported to the CBN uh, as they happen. Uh, you know, that's the directive from the president. The uh, Ministry of Finance, that's the coordinating minister of the economy, has also, uh, on December 28th last year, issued um, a new circular to every MDA, as well as government-owned enterprises, uh, that going forward, you know, we would be using the system uh, technology to sweep 
uh, the government revenues uh, as against what we had before, which was somehow a bit discretionary, even uh, talking about the TSA, a uh, single account. Now it's technology that's sweeping all the money, so there's no escape. Uh, and of course, new orders were given uh, to, to, to GOEs that were fully funded, those that were partially funded, and those that uh, had no funding at all. Uh, so what you are going to be seeing, uh, well, even also this year, the uh, inland revenue uh, is planning 19 trillion in terms of uh, revenue collection, up from 10 trillion last year. And that uh, that they are going to do a lot more than that, you know. So I don't know if I'm still with you, but uh, so I think I think I think so. What you're going to see is uh, a ballooning of our naira revenues. Our, our, our petroleum sector is doing a lot better than before. So once you can deal with the revenue side of things, the debt becomes less of a problem. So when, this is not a government that will be racking up debt and leaving it for the next government. We're going to take our debt to an even more sustainable level, grow GDP levels, and be able to leave a, a better legacy for the coming government. Right. And looking at the data now, we see domestic debt. That's about 59.12 um, trillion, more than you know, our foreign debt um, exposure at this time. And, and some experts say... Um, you know, it's a good thing, you know, if the debt is domestic, but there's also that fear that you're going to crowd out, you know, the private sector at this time. How are you seeing it? Well, um, you can, well, you can't have it all, can you? Um, so the thing about, the thing about foreign debt is, look, uh, we've seen exchange risk and the fact that, uh, you know, if you, if we borrowed that for when, when Naira was 400 and something to the dollar, and now we're talking of about 1,300 to the dollar, hopefully uh, the Naira will get stronger. Uh, but you can see that you're going to have to do thrice the amount of work getting the Naira to convert to the dollar to pay those debts. I would actually favor domestic debt any day. And, and I think what's also very important is this. If we look at um, the countries that we try to emulate in Europe, in America, and what have you, you know, those countries have their debts grounded domestically. Um, most of their debts are war debts, you know, war bonds that were issued a long time ago, you know, sometimes 100, 200 years ago. Uh, so there's, there's the fact that your own people must build your country. Uh, rather than always running abroad to go and get very expensive uh, foreign debt, you know, it's important for us. And I think that's a philosophy that we'd also still have to pursue. We haven't done that that's even well enough. The fact that, uh, you know, we have to appeal to our own people to, borrow, to lend money to the government of, the, of, of uh, to, to their own government for the development of their country. So, um, but uh, yes, I think also in terms of crowding out, what we're looking at is a bigger pie to share, a bigger GDP, it's meaning that the banks are doing incredibly well as well. The banks are doing incredibly well, and I don't think uh, the government has started to crowd out anyone. Uh, the, the banks have posted good profits over time. Uh, they have capacity. The fintechs have come in to lend uh, to even uh, smaller borrowers. So I think we're still on course in this regard. Right, and we're, we're hoping in 2024 the banks will actually take a chance on some of these small businesses, even though we know the banks normally see them you know, as high risk, you know, at this time to lend money. But it's um, the, the MPC, they start their meeting today. Tomorrow we get a decision. You know, it seems the CBN is winning the fight to, you know, stabilize the FX market, but inflation is still stubbornly high. What do you think is the best way, you know, to handle this kind of inflation? Because we've been having rate hikes for the longest time. Right. Um, you know, the central bank is uh, pursuing uh, a positive interest rate uh, real interest rates uh, regime. Uh, remember that uh, inflation is at 31.7 as we speak. Uh, that's headline inflation. And uh, interest rates are still at 22.7 indicated, uh, indicative interest rates. That's the uh, policy rate, 22.75. So the Central Bank is hoping to uh, catch up very quickly. It's going to be a bit painful uh, because um, we need to start depressing inflation Im immediately. I, I would actually, um, I have actually advocated and I've also written on this that what, what we need to understand is that the monetary policy um, instrument alone will not be sufficient. And we should uh, understand that our economy is still growing. We're not at the level of some of the uh, biggest economies in the world where the past three effect and the, um, you know, the, the, the past three effect of monetary policy instrument on the whole economy is very fast, very efficient. Here it is not. So what I've advocated is that um, in order for us to, 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 to drive down inflation quicker, uh, everybody has to have their hands on deck. 
Um, there, there's a lot of uh, price gouging going on in Nigeria. Uh, people who are selling, setting prices arbitrarily, ripping off the people, you know, posting huge profits. So everybody also has to go after that and, and ensure that nobody is cheating them that much. It's, it's, uh, that we need to do that at this moment. So every instance that we see that price increases have, have been uh, extortion, extract, and, you know, kind of extortionary and all of that, we have to go after that. If we look at some of the other structural issues beyond monetary policy, um, we'll be able to drive inflation down faster. Therefore, maybe by the time the central bank, which is likely to, the MPC is likely to increase interest rates, uh, you know, of course that has effects on the, on the manufacturing, real sector and all of that, you know, so, but it, it, let's hope that we, they don't have to increase too high. We don't have to get to the point where countries like Turkey and Co went, went got to before, before reaching the peak. So we're hoping that um, we, can, we, we can reach peak inflation in the next one or two months and at some point, the central bank will also be able to start dropping the, the interest rates in the country. But of course, that is a, a, a clear and present danger for the, uh, for the manufacturing sector, the real sector that needs to borrow money from banks. Uh, the banks aren't looking at small um, borrowers, actually, but uh, there's this, the fintechs to the rescue. Uh, those ones can deal with people who want to borrow 100,000, 1 million. I think it's just the kind of division of labor. Right, and, and definitely, uh, would, they, would they hold policy, would it be that bad, you know, at this time, knowing that we just did about 400 basis points, that's the biggest, you know, hike we've seen in a long time. Um, well, it may not be bad, but, but I think that this is the time for action. I would actually hope that uh, the MPC is, uh, if they're going to increase, maybe not more than 100 basis points, 1%, uh, you know, they need to caution, they need to be cautionary, increases as well but of course they see the dashboard better than i do and they, every every member has a reason for whatever it is they're proposing but uh, i think that they're still going to squeeze a little bit more but i think that the real trick is in understanding that monetary policy alone cannot drive down inflation as fast as we need to i mean we have no business having food inflation of 32 that's 7.92 percent in, in nigeria we have no business doing that so you see we now have to say okay who's driving this Let's, this is the time to understand the structure of uh, markets that's driving down, a lot, driving up all of this inflation. So, who are those guys playing in that market? Who are the middlemen? What's what's the system of pricing? So we're talking about the price discovery system that is uh, that is what drives on the pins all of this. You know, the price discovery. How effective is it in Nigeria? We have an opportunity on our hands to ensure that we put in all of those processes, I call it the superstructure, the infrastructure, intellectual and regulatory infrastructure to ensure that going forward, we will not have unnecessary spikes in inflation. And when we do, even if it's a global issue, we're able to drive it down faster. Everybody. So now is the time to get the data. And the data is key. The data is the real issue. Now is the time to get the data, uh, knowing how much food our, our people are producing. Remember that we have a problem with uh, food exportation, irregular exportation, informal exportation of food. When even our people are talking about not having enough to eat, but you know we can't. We need to stop the idea of people taking food out. And the Minister of Agri has been on that. We've seen action in the recent times, and I'm hoping that with those actions we've seen blocking illegal exports and all of that, at least let them document. Let's know what our, our land is producing. Let's know what our farmers are producing. We know the challenges they have, insecurity and, and all of that. Yeah, but with the produce, and at the end of the day, most of the food escapes out of Nigeria, and we don't get the export proceeds. So that's where the issue is. So we should be able, if we tackle food inflation, we have no business with 37.2. If we can tackle food inflation to maybe 25%, 20%, or even less, you will see that rapidly the, the, the headline inflation itself uh, will drop. So I think uh, it's about focusing, and that's what your show is here to do. And like I said, the media is important. Every Nigerian is important in being vigilant and also uh, accumulating the data to ensure that we drive down our inflation as quickly as we want to. Right, because we, we don't know how much the average consumer can take at this time. We still have um, that debate about Nigeria's minimum wage being the lowest, you know, among, you know, top African uh, countries at this time. And we know, we did get reports that the, the president is going to announce a new minimum wage at some point. But I want to get your opinion. What do you think would be the right number with this kind of inflation in a few seconds? 
where we uh, we missed a few opportunities, I must say. Um, perhaps we shouldn't have been talking uh, about more than 100% increase in the, uh, the the existing minimum wage because the, the, the risk is also that where the minimum wage is too high and every other wage takes a cue from that across the board, uh, you're going to be dealing with what Ghana was dealing with uh, pre-2007. Uh, where people will be earning billions of naira as, sal as salary, you know. So we want to be a bit cautionary about that. I, I think that, and again, no, two things. I think that uh, we should appeal to labor. Labor Congress itself controls about six to seven percent of the working population of Nigeria, according to MBS. Uh, you know, the Bureau of Statistics. Eighty-eight percent of Nigerians work in a structured environment, meaning that most of them are not unionized. So Labour is talking about the, the people who are in an eyes, especially government workers. But that's, that doesn't represent the Nigerian worker at all. And, and the, the, the remit of the government is whole of government. We are concerned with the, everybody who is, who is working, who is striving. The farmers that we're talking about, who produce all the food we eat, who's talking about the minimum wage for them. And in fact, the increases in food prices that we're seeing, very little goes to the, to the, to the farmers. And most of the money gets made by the middlemen. So, so, so I would uh, I'd rather spin this issue as um, as a, a, a whole of government thing. The fact that we need to to, be, to care for our people, our artisans, who are the people speaking up for those people uh, who who have no choice, who have no choices. Uh, so that that's the thing. So I would actually propose no more than a hundred thousand minimum wage. But even a hundred thousand minimum wage does have serious implications across the board uh, for in, for inflation. Uh, going forward for business closures, for businesses that cannot afford to pay that, for, for the ability for people to find jobs, unemployment and all of that. So all of those numbers I've been hearing the uh, Labour Congress talking about, I just wonder where they're yeah, we've, from. We've heard uh, 500,000. If we, if we, lastly, <laughs> if we compare uh, wages across the board like that, simplicity, it's, it's erroneous because there's what is called purchasing power parity. What you can do with a dollar in Nigeria, you probably will need $10 to do that in the U.S. So you don't... Uh, a, a better analysis needs to be done. We need to sit down properly and know uh, all right. what we're talking about because of the okay. implications for the economy. All right. I hope we do find uh, you know, a fine number um, going forward. Thank you so much for coming on, Dr. Tope Fashua, uh, Special Advisor on Economic uh, Affairs to the Presidency. Thank you so much. All right. Let's get a sense of what's happening uh, with some markets now. Um, we did get uh, about after two sessions of positive um, closes the end of the week. We see the local stock market um, ended lower as investors opted to lock in profits on bellwether stocks um, following the recent run-up in share prices. Um, specifically, the all share index, that dipped by about 0.4%. Uh, That's for the week. Um, last week, undermined by loss in uh, MTN Nigeria, that dropped about 12.3%. Um, so we see there um, red. That's uh, the color for the all share index. Uh, last week, 0.42% down. Uh, we see the trading volume there was uh, quite lower than the previous week, 1.73 billion, down 2.1%. And we see value that was down about 7.8%. Let's look at the sectoral performance now. Uh, we see the, uh, the consumer goods counter, that was the lone loser um, last week, with the banking counter shining 4.149%. Even with that um, big move, we didn't get a positive close uh, for the week. And also, we see another financial services. Uh, counter insurance up 8.92 percent, 0.30 percent um, for the oil and gas counter. And at the end of the day, um, investors will be wondering how do they beat inflation. You know, at this time where we're seeing um, the kind of inflation we're seeing right now, it's very stubbornly um, high. Let's um, talk to Mr. Ola today, um, Olegbe. He's the MD uh, CEO at Stevens. Uh, at the Stevens. Uh, Management uh, Limited, join us via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Thank you, Ladies. Thanks for having me. Right. So, um, decision day, we're, we're getting that tomorrow from the MPC. We saw a massive 400 basis points hike at the last uh, meeting. What are you expecting? Well, I'm not expecting them to be as hawkish as they were the last time. Uh, but I still suspect that they will probably continue to uh, move the rates. Uh, maybe slightly uh, less, less aggressively, uh, but um, in as much as the, int the intention is to continue to target inflation, and inflation levels is at what, 31% or thereabouts at the moment, so we're not 
anywhere near what they what they intend to achieve uh, regarding that. So I think that they will, still, they will continue to move the uh, move the rate. Of course, they will also be cautious as to the impact uh, the rates might be having on growth. Uh, the impact it might be having on uh, manufacturing companies whose cost of um, cost of production will now have risen significantly due to the uh, cost of financing. So they have to keep an eye on that while still, you know, doing what they can to battle inflation. As we continue to say, uh, tackling inflation has to be a two-pronged approach. Uh, there has to be mon the monetary side, which, which is what they are trying to tackle. And of course, the structural side, which includes doing other things that are not necessarily mon monetary in nature, uh, taking care of inflation, uh, taking, uh, taking care of the FX uh, side of things, and uh, structural issues also needs to be taken care of in order for us to get to where we are, where we, are, where we intend to be uh, regarding inf inflation levels. Right. Uh, but regarding the FPC, I, I expect um, an uppish move, but maybe, maybe not as aggressively as, uh, as the last time. Right. And, you know, we keep talking about investors, you know, trying to beat inflation um, at this time. That's been happening since 2022. Um, talk to me about how investors in Nigeria can shield their portfolios against this kind of inflation we're seeing. Well, we've, we've seen and, um, you know, em em empirical evidence has shown that um, traditionally in high inflation environments, uh, it is always better to, to, um, to hear on the side of equities because... Um, Empirical evidence have shown that over over time, equities tend to beat uh, tend to beat inflation, and I think that that has been true for uh, for equity, equity investors in Nigeria for the last say one and a half years, uh, and I suspect that that will possibly continue to be true, at least until the point where we get inflation rates down to maybe levels looking like twenty percent or nineteen percent. Uh, so if I was an in an investor, I would continue to uh, uh, look at good fundamentally strong stocks and position there in the hope that the, the returns they make help me to beat inflation. Um, of course, you know, an investor also has to continue to pay attention to the likely impact of the increase in interest interest rates on um, on uh, equity prices because I mean obviously those two markets have an inverse relationship. So okay. as you see interest rates continue to rise, likely it is very likely that uh, participation and the sort of bullishness you are seeing in the equities market will start to subside uh, as, as people start to shift assets from the equities market uh, to, the, um, to the fixed income market. But I mean, we are probably not gotten to the point where uh, the fixed income market will be able to compete with equities regarding uh, the ability to, to beat inflation. So if okay. I, for our investor, I will continue to, to, to side with equity for now. For until, now. Until the point where we get to levels, uh, reach the levels that can compete. Okay. All right. Uh, another issue um, right now, we're seeing, you know, top central banks have been accumulating a lot of gold at this time. See the central bank, uh, they bought about, most of the top central banks, they bought about 1,037 tons of gold. People's Bank of China added roughly... 390,000 um, tons of gold in February, and gold hit a new high. That was um, last week, hovering around the $2,162 um, level. So talk to me, um, is this a cue for investors to start looking towards gold at this time? If you're a long-term investor uh, and you're looking for an asset that, is, um, that, is, uh, that has long duration, that have low risk, and, uh, you know, uh, you are looking to, 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 to diversify your portfolio, then gold might not be a bad idea for you to hold. Uh, you agree with me that we're in a world of crisis, that there's crisis everywhere. There's the Ukraine-Russia war, there's, there's Gaza. Uh, the world is generally battling inflation. Uh, so investors will typically, well, central banks typically will, will look at all of this and, uh, you know, want to... Want to uh, take some precaution against having um, against having uh, uh, reducing their exposure to uh, to fiat currencies fiat reserve currencies such as the US dollar and right. the, uh, and the euro so and that's why you are you are probably seeing some of the central banks moving some of their assets particularly long as long term assets towards gold 
uh, because uh, you know gold reduce reduce the risk that could come from the weakening the weakening right. of some of these fiat preferences. Right. All right. So if, okay. the, US, if the U.S. dollar is weak, is weakened and um, the bulk of your reserves is in the, in the U.S. dollars, then you are exposed. All right. But if you move some of these assets or diversify some of these assets into gold, then you, at least it protects you and gives you the kind of diversification you're looking okay. for. All right, thank you so much, um, Mr. Olatunde Amolibe, MDC, after Stevens Asset Management uh, Limited. It was great having your perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Lady. Thanks for having me. All right. So we'll keep tracking the price of gold uh, for this week and um, the local boss uh, right here. But that does it for Business Morning. I'm going to hand things over now to the Sunrise Daily team. Thank you.